Hi everyone, my name is Luke Shilunki and today we are back on the RTS project um, that we've got going. So today I did say in the last video that I'd sort out the issue with the player, well not the player, but the unit movement. Um, so before it was a bit dodgy, we'd click on one of the tiles we wanted to move it to and it wouldn't really move very well, it wouldn't work very reliably at all really. Um, now you can see I've got that working and I'll go through what I've done with that. Um, it was partly helped by um, Rainbow Wolfie who sent me a little bit of code um, from a website which is quite useful. It's called Isometric Tile Map Math. Um, but let me show you exactly what we've done. So it's quite long and complicated. I'll do my best to explain um, it all. This was the code we had last uh, episode, last week, and we don't need that anymore, it's awful. I don't know what I was thinking with it, it was never going to work um, for what we needed to do, so we can get rid of that one. Uh, this, however, the stuff here we need. So we had this at the end of the last video, var mx equals mouse x, var and y equals mouse y. That's pretty straightforward. Um, var tile height uh, equals 22, var tile width equals 41, that's just our sprite width and height, as you can see there, width 41, height 22. Uh, then, well actually we might convert that into a macro later. Now we've got the big complicated bit here. Um, now what this technically does is it finds, it. it's pretty hard to explain what's it. Let me get paint up, um, uh, paint, and I can explain it a little bit better. So, in your normal grid, like in the sandbox, the normal sky, we have lines like this, and that's really bad, but they, you get the idea, they're regular. Um, problem is, we're doing isometric, so they go a bit more like this. They're irregular. Um, now, what this system does is it flips that around to be that. Um, so what we're saying is this is zero zero this is zero one oops or actually it'd be the other way around be one zero if being correct zero and this is two zero etc etc you get the idea now what the system does is it does the same um, but with this so that's zero zero that's one zero that's two zero so it works like that, it flips it around basically. Um, so the way it does that is with this kind of calculation here. It's kind of complicated, um, but just copy it down to be honest. It's one of those things that it just works, you know. Um, and that was the bit that was copied off the math kind of. So it takes the mouse, it then divides it by the tile height then adds on the MX divided by the tile width um, and then rounds it down um, that's quite important because it rounds it to this point here um, but this raw output um, comes out like numbers so grid coordinates like 1, 2 um, just like we have here uh, but then this is the kind of bit I needed to edit myself and mess around with it's with object basic unit we had this last time we're going to set the x and the y to these so we take the grid and then we minus the y from it um, so let's take this well let's make a few more put a few more numbers in here um, right so let's say we take 2, 1. What it does is it minus, it takes the grid x, so in this case 2, minus is 1. Okay, so that would be 1, and then times is it, that what times is it? Times it by that um, to get the x. So that is half a tile. And I believe that's. Oops. Right, and then that gets that gets you the X basically. Um, it gets sorry, it gets you this point here though. 
Um, and the same happens here with the Y. Uh, it adds them like this time. And then what I've done here is added half of the tile height. So I'm going to make a few adjustments to this quickly. Uh, and so that places it bang in the middle there. Um, also, this this is long, complicated math. Um, I could go into a lot of detail explaining it, but at, for the moment, we'll just uh, leave it at that and, and copy it down because you've seen it working. Um, right, so next thing I'm going to do is just quickly make these a little bit more optimized. So, in fact, what I'm going to do if Not entirely sure how you get to the. Uh, how you get to the macros here? Maybe they don't exist. Nope. Hmm. We'll just leave it for the moment then, um, and I'll find out how you get to that later. It's all relatively new to me. So, time zing. We're, currently we've got 20.5. Oh, that's a hard-coded variable and I don't like it. So we're going to do tile width divided by 2. Same is going to happen here. It's going to be tile height div 2. And then we're also going to add um, exactly that one. Now, when we run it, you'll see the exact same thing. Basically, I just sub the values into there, depending on what this is. But now if you run that, no matter what your tile height is, no matter what your tile width is, as long as you code them in right here, you code everything else in right, you'll see it works perfectly fine. Now. And that that's basically the movement um, done there. So you can see it, it's not very nice movement. Um, and we could get around up and uh, we'll probably do that in the next video. So let's just set it up here. We can make a script. Script is going to be called script unit move, and this is going to work relatively simply, um, and just move it uh, the unit a little bit, li little by little, uh, until it reaches its destination, and that will be within here, and then well, we might not even need a script, to be honest. Let's let's have some variables for this. Um, I'm going to presume they work exactly the same as before. And they might not. So what we need to pass into this, we'll just write it up like this because for the time being that'll work. Uh, we want to pass in our destination x at destination y current x well do we need current x possibly not because um, we can find that out using our widths and stuff we need to know the speed okay so what if we call that now you know move yeah that's not going to work like that um, so that's another thing we need to do but the gist of how we use this is say we need to set up some variables so var nx that would be stand for new x var ny new y then we're going to use a script um, which hasn't been coded yet but we'll just for the time being pretend it has so we need a destination x and x destination y and y we need a speed let's say 3 so what we then code into this is we'll do a, oh, what's going on there <laughs> we'll do a loop here that says until we've reached our destination x we're just going to add um, our speed on uh, so we can define some of these variables I guess now we're going to say dx equals uh, destination 1 or argument 0 for our dy equals argument one we're gonna say var speed equals argument two. Now the gist of it will be to have a loop end loop. We just write a little bit of um, pseudocode out there. 
So we're gonna loop until reached destination. Uh, we're then going to well, we might need two loops. I'm not sure. We might need to add to the x and the y at the same time to make sure that we don't. Or we could have a scale at the speed, um, which could be interesting. But for the moment, we'll just say loop until destination and loop. Um, in here, we will just add speed to x and y, and um, basically that'll be it. We're going to loop until we've reached the destination, then we're going to add to the speed in x and y, if we haven't, if we have, we're going to end loop, and then we're going to return. That's relatively simple uh, pseudocode there. I don't know why it doesn't like this, to be honest. Um, I guess it's, yeah, it's because we haven't defined the variables, even though we have here, we're not defining them properly. So, if you want to set this uh, like this, you only really need this bit here, this bit's broken, if you know how to fix it, you can do that yourself. Um, but you need to define these variables here, just like that, so you need destination x, destination y, speed, and define them as variables. Um, and then also call it here, just to make it more useful, and change the nx and the ny. Also make sure you've got all this down as well, because this is going to be very useful in the next few videos. Okay, that's uh, going to be it for this video. In the next video, we'll go and write that script up um, fully and turn this into real code. Uh, but for the time being, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you like the video, remember to like, subscribe. I always do what you guys want to do, and I will talk to you in the next one.